Welcome to the Modern Carnivore Podcast, a guide for those interested in hearing more about hunting, fishing, and other paths to eating more responsibly. Now, here's your host, Mark Norquist. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. And uh, you may or may not recognize this voice. So uh, I'm here with Todd. This is Mark, and uh, I'm here with Todd. Todd, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you today? I'm uh, I'm doing well, and uh, we're doing a little bit something different here in that we're we've got the same opening here for the Modern Carnivore podcast as we have for the Outdoor Feast podcast, which you host. And the reason being is that we've got two conversations going here: one that you had and one that I had that I think really relate to themselves well. And mine is with Ronell Lynn, who is a first time hunter who went out this last fall whitetail deer hunting with his mentor, my friend Eric Jensen. And you have a conversation with who and about what? Yeah. So I'm having a conversation with my friend Krista Whiteman from New York. And Krista is sharing her story about her first archery deer. Uh, she was successful this year. Uh, it's an incredible story. She's an Artemis ambassador. Uh, she's a forager with Wild Woman Apothecary. She's got great perspective. And I can't wait to launch this conversation. It's fun. Uh, she's got a lot of cool things to share. Yeah, you know, I've been you know following Krista for quite some time on social media and and since you you two connected you know years ago and and you and I've talked about her and her journey into into hunting and so I'm really looking looking forward to to listening to that conversation and uh and I think people are going to like the the conversation with Renell too uh Renell you know he he works in the the meat department of a a local food co-op in Minneapolis and um, a great example of how Eric, as as a seasoned hunter, somehow just struck up a conversation with Rennell one day, like at the meat counter, and said, "Hey, you ever been hunting?" <laughs> <laughs> he said no. And uh, he said, do you want to go? So next thing you know, they're they're planning a, a backwoods hunt that I would say is, you know, Eric's was one of the founding members here, uh, really, of the uh, of the Minnesota chapter of backcountry hunters and anglers. And so he's very passionate about backcountry hunting and uh, including you know, whitetail uh, deer hunting, you know, your typical whitetail hunter, I think is, you know, it's, it's a lot of different scenarios, but it's, it's generally, you know, you're, you don't have too far to walk. You might be driving a car to a trailhead and then walking in a bit to your stand, or maybe you're even taking a four wheeler or a quad back somewhere. And you're generally not walking too far, but uh, Eric took Rennell into a, a deep back country hunt right off the bat. And I think they hiked <laughs> back in, I forget how, how far it was we talk about it in the conversation but uh, they had to drag a, a deer out of there which was quite a distance and uh and he loved it and so i went over and helped uh, help those guys butcher the deer a little bit I, I did a little bit of work but mostly was setting up for the podcast and then uh, and then we had a had a fun conversation right in the middle of uh, of the butchering process Oh, I can't wait to listen to that one. Talk about jumping right in too, right? Getting right into a backcountry hunt. Uh, that's That sounds fun. And uh, what a cool opportunity. <laughs> like, that's great that Eric just approached him about it and he was willing to do it. Rennell's willing to go out and, and to be able to find success in a hunt like that is is remarkable. It's I can't, it's going to be a good conversation. Look forward to it. Yeah, no, it's, it's fun. And now is... Is this Krista's first deer or first deer with archery? I forget. She's mostly, that's what she's been focusing on has mm -hmm. been archery for the last few years, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is her first deer and she is primarily an archery hunter. She identifies as an archery hunter and she's been hunting for something like maybe three years, maybe four, something like that. I think three and so she shares her story in the in the podcast episode. Uh, she lives in the Hudson Valley, Catskill region of New York, and uh, she's also a hunter ed instructor. Uh, she just signed up, and um, you know, right. in, yeah, in person hunter ed classes have have um, been kind of squashed this year because of COVID. Uh, so everything's online, uh, but she's she's just doing so much for conservation. Um, I, I'm so excited to 
to share that story about her deer. And then she just talks about, um, you know, engaging the landowner, her friend who let her hunt on the property. Um, it was a private land deer that she shot and just sharing meat with the landowner and sharing the experience of tracking the deer with her landowner friend, getting her engaged. And so the whole conversation's just, it's great. Um, Krista did so many good things in that. And so I'm excited to share it. And she also talks about some of her favorite recipes, how she's been cooking it. And then, you know, we just have some conversations about all her other work too. So uh, it's uh, always fun to catch up with her. She's awesome. Oh, that's, that's great. I, I love her energy around it. So, well, why don't we jump right into it? Just a little little tip for everybody. If you're listening on the Modern Carnivore podcast, you're going to hear, hear the conversation with Rennell and Eric now. If you are on the Outdoor Feast podcast, you're going to hear Krista. Uh, and I would recommend listening to that podcast and then flip over to the other one and, uh, and, and listen to the other conversation. Uh, both really good uh, stories of new hunters. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so uh, here we are. We are in South Minneapolis, and uh, we're going to be talking about deer hunting today. And uh, it's it's back end of deer season um, here in Minnesota. Weather's been back and forth from cold to warm to really warm to now where it should be the 30s here pretty nice we're cutting meat tonight we're which is good some meat. cutting some meat <laughs> yeah i love it and uh so why don't you guys uh, introduce yourself why don't my friend here to my right who uh who i don't i don't think you've been on the podcast before no i i haven't uh, i'm eric jensen and um well i think my well, biggest thing i've been involved with in the last 10 years is uh helping build the minnesota chapter of backcountry hunters and anglers and i've been real involved with um mentoring as well as you know doing a lot of the organizational stuff for bha but mentoring new hunters which is a big passion of mine uh just because I, that's something we have to do to keep our hunting culture going in america you know absolutely it's just, i I had an epiphany when, once when I saw the numbers sliding. I said, I got to do something. So, yeah. I think anyway. we, we're at the spot here. This is this is where I met you maybe five, six years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paula said to me at that dinner, she said, uh, so are you part of the, the club? I'm like, what club are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it wasn't that long. You were on the, the BHA board, and we've been on the board ever since. And now we're, we're, finally, we're finally stepping finally off this. Finally stepping back. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's been a journey. It's been a good journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, we got somebody else here tonight. All right. Uh, <laughs> my name's Ron L. Um, I work at the sewer co-op, and, you know, uh, I work as a meat butcher there, and this is my first time ever going out hunting, and I'm so stoked. I got a deer on my first run. This is great. Second weekend in. Oh, man, great. So that's um, the deer we're cutting tonight is your deer. That is my deer. Yeah, that's that is a my nice deer. big doe. Beautiful, beautiful. I even named her. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> named Which, her Lucy. Lucy, okay. <laughs> There we go, Lucy. Yeah. I did not know she had a name. Uh. So uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, before before we jump into the, the how you guys met. So, Renell, tell us a little bit about, about your background. You, you said you're from Minnesota, right? Yep. I was born and raised in Minnesota. Um, I moved out in my younger years to St. Louis, Missouri, and that's where I was raised and came back here, mostly for educational purposes. You yeah. Know? Uh, I got, some, uh, got into some schooling at Dunwoody Technical College. So I was I was heavy into robotics. I was into, you know, technology. And then I'm at the co-op half a year in, and here comes Eric rolling up. And he's like, hey, you want to hunt? I'm like, huh, nobody's asked me that before, so <laughs> yeah, let, let's get it started. <laughs> and now, you know, a year later, you know, here he is, here we are. And I've got my first deer, and he's taught me so much. I'm glad, so glad to be here right now. So what did you think when this this random guy said, uh, hey, you want to go out hunting? That's probably, yeah, is that, that's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> well, that was the scrap meat, and I asked you, because I was getting scrap uh, for mixing in my venison a little bit of beef scrap you know how you okay, do yeah, yeah and now that we have our own grinder that's you know a little cheap one but we can mix our own burgers and stuff yeah and so then i saw and he kind of seemed i always talk about hunting at the co-op and especially when i'm at the meat counter like why why i need this scrap 
And then you seem kind of interested in hunting. And I even said, like, like you paid a little more attention. I was like, hey, is that something you have an interest in doing? And you were like, yeah, it is an interest of mine. I'm just not sure how to get going on it. <laughs> I think what really got me was that you wrote a letter. And that was like, I was oh, my God, he put in real effort for this. You wrote a freaking letter for me. I read it, and I was like, holy God, who does that? That's so amazing. I got I to gotta get to meet this guy. So, way, to, way to step it up there. Awesome <laughs> yeah. job. That was one way to recruit someone there. I got to take note. So that was about a year, year and a half ago? Well, it must have been under a year ago, but, you know, it was on the tail would have been after last year's season because I was cutting up stuff and you know I was start I'd gotten this grinder and I wanted to get some scraps yeah and, you know so it must have been January or something like okay. right after deer season when I was doing what we're doing now you know okay. processing and then starting to fiddle around with recipes you know how you do yeah yeah so yeah that was uh, you know and, and there's been a lot of discussions and you know mark you're familiar you know how are we going to reach out to new you know demographics people who uh you know aren't you know from the traditional hunting background and you know i think you know people got to just you know there's always somebody in your sphere and that you might want to go and don't assume they don't want to go that's exactly it that's what i talk about a lot with people it's like it just it begins with a conversation exactly like you guys it's just like you ask somebody hey you ever been hunting you have you have any interest and you know a lot of people say no and be like okay that's cool but maybe they'll they'll think about it too i'm sure they've always the thing is like a lot of people you know they they think about it all the time and they always say oh man i'd love to do it i'd love to do it but it's just about that right way of getting them in there, and you know that is a challenge itself. But because it is a big thing to do, you're going out and you're killing something, and you know that can just psych a lot of people out. But this is the first time you you you've killed an animal, right? Yes. This weekend. So this was 48 hours ago, about right? Yep. When you got that deer. So um, so Eric sends you a letter says says you want you want to learn to hunt. Um, well, I, I sent him some stuff from uh, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, okay. a meat eater. Meat okay. eater, yeah. I said, okay. hey, we'll check out this show. There's a couple. I might have, there's maybe I told you about Newberg's show, but I definitely told you about meat eater. There might have been, it was just, I sent a, I gave him materials. You know, hey, check a few of these things out. Yeah. Cool. You know, as a way to like. And so did that reaffirm, okay, yeah, I really want to check this out more. And I mean. I've always been, you know, watching meat eaters, you know, Animal Planet and Discovery Channel, been watching survival, you know. That's always been, like, my passion, just going out. I've always been an adventurous person to begin with, just free-spirited in general. So I was the right person to come to for him, definitely. Yeah. He saw that. <laughs> so did you – you didn't go through a formal, um, formal program this year, or did you? I forget. Well – I remember suggesting I was hoping to. You actually had contacted the agency, but it must have been with COVID. I don't remember. But no, I don't think it's been formal. It's kind of kind of just a friendship thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Between no, that's how it happened out. But I was hoping like that. that I mean, but because of COVID, it didn't happen this year. Right. So because so, I was hoping to get him into a program, but they right. a lot of them got shut down. Yeah, this exactly. Yeah. So did you guys get out and do any shooting beforehand and, and talk about well, we what it was going to be? Okay, you did some scouting. Okay. We did some scouting, what, last winter? Yeah, oh, that was the first thing we did together, which was I said, hey, do you want to go out? And I, ju- I basically said, well, I'm going to go out, check out this area where I'm thinking of taking my daughter hunting next year, and I'll, yeah, I'm going to be squirrel hunting, and uh, I'll just show you what I look for and how I hunt squirrels. And actually, squirrel hunting was terrible, but I was, because we only saw like one. So I was like, I, I think I told him, don't buy a license, just see what goes on. Yeah, yeah. You know, the season's almost over. I think it was February, wasn't it? I think maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit after December. Sometime. Yeah. I can't remember too long. And so I said, yeah, the season's almost over, but at least you can see what goes on. And then I I remember I tried to, well, you know, it was kind of like I'm looking for deer uh, at the same time. I mean, deer, um, you know, trails and stuff, like how you do in late winter. Or, or, that, or that's a good thing to do. And I kind of tried to say, hey, look at this, how the landscape breaks and... 
we just got out of the city. I don't know. We were just out there for a couple yeah. hours or something. So you went out. You went out in the woods in the middle of winter, though. Is that something? Had you done that before? Like this? oh, definitely. Okay. Okay. I've been backpacking, mountain climbing. Okay. I mean, I've definitely been out there. In okay. The world, so cool. So. You've you've done a lot of outdoor yeah. stuff. <laughs> so that was that wasn't a new part for you. That no, aspect not at all. of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So you went out, did some scouting, and then um, did you get out to? Because had had you shot a gun before? Yeah. Okay. So yes, you, I so have. You had, you had some familiarity. I had with that? some. Uh, I definitely shot quite a few. Oh, smoke's getting all in my face. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I was worried about that. <laughs> but yeah, I've definitely shot a few guns, so I've had quite an experience. I, you know, I didn't flinch at all when I went to the shooting range well, and you know, shot rifles with him. <laughs> yeah, we did. We had a one day where I was like, "Will you shot?" When he, when you told me that, I was like, "Well, I was like, well, you got that. That helps you." And then I said, one thing I remember telling you, you know, you work. You know, yeah, cutting up meat. I said, you, I was like, you've got to give you a leg up into this whole thing. Yeah, that's a skill, and you've got some shooting experience. And I said, well, and I asked, we did. I we want. I want to make sure that you could shoot. You know, with the that bolt action rifle that you yeah. ended up using. So we went rifle shooting during the summer sometime, right? Yep. Yeah. And that that worked good. And I, I was like, I could tell, like, you know, he's solid. Like yeah. he could, you know. This is going to work. Yeah, this is going to work. Because you were <laughs> fine at 100, and then it's like you were... Well, 200 yards, that was like, yeah. uh, that was really hard. But <laughs> right, but I, I, I told you, I, this was like Definitely. 100 is probably what you need for yeah, Minnesota deer hunting, which ended up being true, because yeah. this doe was probably, what, 60, 70 yards yeah, away or something. Around there. Place I do yeah, most of my deer hunting here in Minnesota, like a long shot would be 45, 50 yards. Oh. It's, it's pretty tight. Thick, yeah, yeah. thick woods, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. You yeah. can't be able to shoot that far. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, uh, your work is, is you're, you're at this co-op. In the meat department, right? Yep, so exactly. what a what a great way <laughs> to meet and have the conversation. <laughs> it just falls right in hand. It's yeah, so perfect. Exa- exactly. Uh, so you decided to uh, to head out to a place to go deer hunting uh, sec- second weekend, right? Right. Well, I it was kind of like I had a thing set up in my mind, and it all did fall into place. Um, uh, was that well first weekend? Would be family, and it ended up being my wife and I went yeah. out, and we did well. And then, and I was trying my nephew. It would be I, be my wife and I, and possibly my nephew. And my nephew ended up not being able to go, but that was gonna be like family weekend. And I thought, you know, I gotta have one weekend. I'll have one weekend where I'm bringing out new people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I was like, well, it's just second weekend, and because it, you know, as weather, as you know, it gets colder and colder, <laughs> and the way I do it, you know, or at least this particular hunt, which is sort of my main hunt, is we're camping out in the cold. We've got good equipment, but and you're hiking back pretty far on public land, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my man, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, having it, nightmares. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I think it's two and a quarter miles. And as I was telling him, I said, you know, this is gonna be a tough. You know, it's gonna be badass, but it does give you an advantage in the sense that there's not going to be as much hunting pressure there. Yeah. So that two and a quarter miles, how much of that is trail and how much is bush? Oh, no, it's it's all, it's logging trail. It is all logging trail, yeah. okay. But it's a non-motorized state forest, so, yeah. you know, uh, most of the hunting pressure tends to be in the first half mile or so. Yeah. Although we did, there are people that are, There's a there was a, Paula and I, my wife Paula, we did see a couple guys who said, hey, are you the campers? <laughs> and they, they said we said yeah, and they said yeah, we're doing it too this year. They were going ahead of di- other di- a different area that was quite remote, but they had bikes. So, the idea is getting around, <laughs> you know. But I guess I think it's great because, um, it, you know, it'll spread people out on public land. You know, not everybody. Hopefully, you know, not everybody hunting right in that half mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, exactly. It definitely paid off. So, you, do you guys go out on Friday or what? Yeah, we started Friday, okay. Friday morning. Friday morning, okay. And we drove out to there. get to get camp set up by Friday night. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to hunt like kind of in the afternoon. Okay, um, but we only got you know, on that Friday. We only got like what an hour of legal shooting left, so we really okay. didn't, didn't really do it. Yeah. yeah, I mean we 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 had it was just getting the tents, walk the drive, walking in, getting the tent set up. And then we needed to add an additional stand so that, you know, because now there was three of us instead of just, you know, weekend before had been two. So 
but we did see a deer the, <laughs> the first night i mean i mean but we weren't even in stand but yeah so that was uh, yeah as soon as i get in we get down to the uh, little hunting hole there and you know, we're setting up the uh, carabiners to climb up and we turn around i'm like oh oh what is that there's there's one right there it's like what like uh maybe 30 yards away from yeah, me yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i didn't have my rifle ready and i'm like i'm kind of you know it's my first time i'm kind of like my, my heart's pumping i'm like oh man and then it kind of it didn't really see us we didn't spook it but it kind of just ghosted yeah, yeah. out before okay. i could ever get ready okay uh, i was really mad it was a nice stag too oh uh, yeah i would have loved the horns oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> i told you though i would have been really happy but i would have told you Man, need you get lucky. <laughs> 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Man, we would have had to end the hunt right there. <laughs> hey, this is Mark, I and I just want to quickly thank you for listening to the podcast and also tell you about one of our partners, Sitka Salmon Shares. This company is like a vegetable CSA, except for it's completely focused on wild-caught Alaskan fish. So here's how it works. You pre-order your share of the harvest for the upcoming fishing season, which is April to December. And then this determines how much they're going to target in their catch for the season. Result is each month you'll get your share of the catch delivered right to your doorstep. This is about four and a half to five pounds of fish. So here's what I love about this company. These are real independent small boat family fishermen. Check out their stories and videos on their website. You know, it's it's not a multinational corporation with staff who are on a factory boat processing the fish. These are small boat fishermen. And they're focused on responsibly catching these fish, both from the methods they use, which nearly eliminate bycatch, to targeting the right species at the right time so that they can sustainably manage the fishery up there. And the result is some of the best quality fish you could get anywhere. So go to sitkasalmonshares.com and use the code modcarn25 on checkout and you'll get $25 off your premium share for the upcoming fishing season. Again, just enter modcarn25 on checkout at sitkasalmonshares.com. So you guys got set up Friday. Uh, you also got Alex with you, another, yeah. another new hunter. Yes. And so he was hunting off in a different area, and then you two were together? Yep. And were you stand hunting or, or ground hunting? What were you doing? I forget. We, we had stands, um, and then I set it up. You know, it was great the fact that I was tagged out. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, I could play the role of guide. And yeah. I wasn't getting confusion about, I'll be carrying a gun. And if yeah. the deer comes from here, then I'll shoot. And yeah. from there, you know. Um, so I just had my stand off just right at his level so I, we could whisper to each other, which, and, you know, watch and, you know. Um, so, yeah, that was great. But we, we found a, 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 a nice high spot that kind of you could kind of see thick thicker wooded area yeah, yeah but yeah. it had a, it had it was kind of an intersection of deer trails okay okay <laughs> okay yeah it had a lot of uh shooting lanes but it was really thick we had to definitely tie some twigs yeah and kind of get some Just lanes open in it up there. a bit yeah, yeah. yeah they don't let you cut yeah. anymore yeah. so we yeah. actually <laughs> bring some twine and kind of tie some, okay. some branches over <laughs> did a lot a lot of a lot of popple what what was the what kind of wood did you have in her Oak well, or pine? the hardwood, or I mean, the the big trees were these classic great oaks. But then there were there was a lot of young uh, aspen around. And, okay, yeah. And they had done they had done quite a bit of cutting. Yeah. And uh, just Rennell, we he had, well he had walked in there just uh, before me, uh, just to look around. There's a section where they had done a bunch of logging. Yeah. And there was a lot of sign there, right? A lot of new growth. A lot of potential, like bedding areas and mm-hmm. feeding ground. It was just a freaking haven for deer. It was insane, and <clears throat> the trail, you know, definitely with all the public or the private uh, shooting going around, it's definitely pushing them towards that feeding ground, and mm-hmm. they're just coming up that hunting mm-hmm. hole. Ah, it's just perfect spot. So, what time did you get in the stand on Saturday? Well, uh, 
Was that it was what 10 20 minutes before legal probably 20 minutes before legal okay. shooting lane? Yeah, so you're talking six, six fifteen, something like that. Was that yeah, no, wait, mm-hmm. legal shooting ended at what five? No, when, when we got in on the morning, Le- legal shooting, I think, was about six thirty. I think, okay, yeah, yeah, I don't remember it being that dark. I don't know, maybe it was like a maybe a half hour before. Yeah, okay. Okay. we 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 made it before legal shooting, but not a lot. Not a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we actually have to walk away from our tent just okay. to get down to the spot, which makes it it's down and there's slash pot. <laughs> yeah, we had to go through quite a like, like a jumbled quite a, mess. Sort yeah, of it was stuff. a mess. Yeah, slash yeah. piles everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's uh, that can be tough. But it it makes it yeah. not other. People don't want to go there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did you sit m- most of the day Saturday, and then did you yep. see, see anything in the morning, or? Uh, we saw. That was when we saw we s- that second spike, right? That little buck. We saw that. Yeah, I'm trying to remember it. Uh, yeah, we saw that second spike because we saw well, like six total down there. In okay. Wow. Yeah, we saw a spike when we first. We saw that spike when we first got there, and then we sat up for a few hours. Um, in the morning, I think right a little bit before uh, noon, and then we saw another one. But uh, it yeah, was, that uh, one was moving kind of fast. It was moving really fast. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. really get a shot on that. Definitely. So Lucy, when does Lucy come into the picture? So we go, yeah, we go back for yeah. lunch. Um, we out. Let's see here. Yeah, we go, we go back for lunch. We come back out, um, and uh, just like. Four minutes before legal shooting, we're sitting up there. We're cold, and there's before it was over. You mean? Was it? Yeah, before, before it was over, it was getting close. Yeah, it was before. getting really close. It was like a couple of minutes before okay, legal right shooting. Before for sure. legal sh- shooting, and here they would come, end. Yeah. just running down like three, three, two fawns and a doe. And uh, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, here's my chance. I can finally get it here. So she's coming, she's coming. I'm trying to get a shot, and my heart's racing. It's you know my adrenaline's pumping like crazy. And I, I get my scope ready, and I look down, and I'm trying to get a good shot. I don't, I'm wor- really worried about trying to get a gut shot. I really don't want it to suffer. Yeah. Wanted a clean shot behind the shoulder. And she was just getting behind that tree, and I panted. I'm like, no, I'm going to lose her. And I had to just make the shot. And luckily enough, double long shot. And it was perfect. It's great. And there she goes. She jumps up, and then she goes down. And the other fawns are just... They didn't even notice. They were like, oh, where's, what's going on here? And they're just running around still. If Alex was down there, oh, he would have had another one. Yeah. Uh, it would have been great. Yeah, but yeah. Hauling so, that up, not fun. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big doe. That's a really nice-sized doe. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so you field-dressed it that evening in the dark, I presume. What time did you get back to camp? I don't remember. <sighs> late? It was definitely late. Well, we went. We needed to get some dinner. Okay. And we made some tenderloins. Yeah, we cut the tenderloins out. <laughs> okay. Had that for dinner. Nice. <laughs> and, then, and then we made the decision to take, yeah, to take the animal back to the car, and that was a long... Oh, so you took the animal back that night. Yeah, in the snow. So you, in the snow, oh. in the dark, two and a quarter mile hike out. <laughs> Oh yeah, deer. it's insane. I don't even yeah. know. Oh yeah. man, which for a deer hunt, that's a big deal out west. You know, elk elk hunt. They, the guys are doing that all the time. But uh, the typical deer hunt, I would say, is a drag, maybe a couple hundred yards to a trail or something. Oh, and, and, and I then wish. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we. I think it was. I don't know. It ended up being the right call, but I think some of it was like I hadn't the weekend before. I had set up this sort of. And, and then it, it, I I put too much load on it. I had set up this kind of wimpy little meat pole. Yeah. And I kind of like, well, yeah. the coyotes probably aren't going to come. Yeah. But I don't have the the, the meat pole kind of collapsed. And we're going to have to bring it to the car anyway. And let's just do it. And we weren't going to go hunting in the morning because obviously he's, he's tagged out. Yeah. I'm tagged out. So did you guys, you, you guys just packed up and, and broke camp? That night, or no, did you no, drink? No, you, no. You, so you took the deer out, then went back in. Yep, and, and then and we just slept just in. Just slept in. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. which feels nice, doesn't it? I know. I, I <laughs> wish we made the right call there because pushing that back with the other stuff. Oh, that yeah, would have been, been fun. That would have been a bit much. It uh, after you tag out and you get to sleep in. That's that's like a gift. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I know. We were so tired when we got back to to the tent, and it was like. 
That and, must know, have been late. Oh, it was midnight. Yeah. It was tw- I think it was 1220. Yeah, it was almost 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. Sure. And then I remember you were falling asleep in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there making coffee, and I'm uh, oh, passing yeah, out. I, you know, I was like, we got quite <laughs> chill. Yeah. And uh, I, when... What were, what were the temps? I forget. Well, you know, it wasn't that cold, but, you know, we, we had sweated so hard. Oh, yeah. And then it was snowing. It was a beautiful snow. I mean, I hated it, but it was beautiful just because it was making our journey harder and harder. And we had gotten quite wet. And then in the tents we um, that I have, Seek Outside tents, they have, you know, you they're floorless and they have a wood-burning stove. And I said, you know, once we get back, I said, we need to, we need to, we can't go into bed with being this, even oh, with a yeah, good sleeping. Yeah, we got to warm up. Yeah, don't want to yeah, risk absolutely. hypothermia or something. Absolutely. You know? Did you get comfortable that night? Did oh, you? Or did you get dried out and had a, had I, a good night's went, sleep? I slept like a baby, like right away. <laughs> <laughs> I was passed out. <laughs> oh, uh, man. So you had a good hunt. You had a tenderloin dinner. You slept like a baby, <laughs> and then and then just had to, got to sleep in, and then and then broke camp the next morning and headed out. Yeah, well, we wanted to help Alex out. You know, I was really yeah. bummed about him. Not even he's not even seen. Dude, yeah, it's you too know? bad. Yeah, it was definitely. I told Alex, it's too bad. I said, you. I think you ended up being the guinea pig. He's like, yeah, that's the story of my life. You know, because <laughs> that spot where he was hunting and. It, the deer don't seem to mind at least opening weekend it's you know it's 250 yards from our tent you know yeah. and i shot a nice buck there last year and paula my wife uh, she i'm not shooting any of them but she saw some nice deer there um this the first weekend and it didn't matter that you can see our tent from that stand it just didn't but i wonder if the pressure or the fact that you know we're camping on that corner i don't know yeah they just nice. do, they don't want to move in the open but down in the this more difficult spot um they were just doing deer stuff I don't know. Uh, yeah they were just doing deer stuff there i think in alice's spot you know with all the the dogs and the private land you know from the farmland they're kind of scaring them away from that spot at least that's what i was thinking because the wind was definitely blowing in the other direction they couldn't have scented us at right, all you right know? so i don't know it's weird yeah yeah it's weird yeah sometimes you just never know what, what, right. what and why but. <laughs> yeah it's hard to know why deer say oh i don't want to travel that way this you know yeah. today yeah so Rennell, um you think you'll, you'll go hunting again definitely yeah i can't wait for the next one already <laughs> <laughs> that is great any interest in trying other types of hunting too? Other I'm than thinking deer hunting? a small game. I'll okay. try a small game a bit. You know, turkeys, uh, squirrels, pheasants, ducks. Yeah. Um, definitely try that out um, before I make another crazy attempt like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. Um, well, that's that is exciting. Well, I can't wait for you. To have, and now, so you had the tenderloin on Saturday night. Was that? Have you eaten venison before? Well. Slightly. I mean, I had a venison pizza. It kind of looked crumbles on there, so I didn't really get a full taste of okay. venison until okay. that moment there. Okay. Really lean, oh, yeah. just delicious. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna love this deer. Oh, this is gonna man. be a very tasty. Deer. I've, I've been like so interested in like recipes. I've been looking up so many recipes. Like, oh man, what am I gonna make with this? I got stews and ah. Uh, yeah, but it's you're gonna love it. It's gonna, gonna open a whole new world. So. <laughs> Well, congratulations on uh, on your first deer. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, look forward to to helping you out in whatever way is needed. And we got a good community here to to uh, support you on that journey and and trying out some other things. Yeah, and if you know if anyone sees this and want to hunt with me, you know I'm available. So. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I, I, I told him. I told him turkey hunting. He's some. I I told him. I said, well, that, I was just mentioning different opportunities. I'm like. I said, well, the next thing, you know, because he had to go on his, uh, he didn't have his hunter safety, so he had to go on the apprentice validation. And I said, well, the first thing you should do is go home, get your, you know, get the deer carved up, get, you know, go online, get your hunter safety so you can go out without me and start poking around in the woods and yeah. get your your your, uh, your first uh, shotgun and go. And I said, then you, you got spring, you got turkey hunting. And he was kind of interested in that. And I said, but you know what? I said, we got to find somebody else other than me to help you with that because I'm no good at that <laughs> one. <laughs> so if anybody out there listening that really knows how to turkey hunt and wants to mentor somebody, 
Um, yeah, definitely help me out. <laughs> well, Otherwise, we'll, I'm just going to go out there on my own. <laughs> we'll, we'll set that up. So here's the thing. I've hunted my whole life, but last year was my first, or th- this year was my first year turkey hunting. Yeah. And it's something I've never done. And so we'll get you out next spring oh, and yeah. with my friend Mark Strand, who is a world-class turkey hunter. I think he's shot turkeys in 23 states, two wow. countries. And so, uh, he yeah. He's a so, pro. <laughs> yeah, he knows what he's doing. So we'll definitely get you out in the spring. That would be fun. Yeah, I would love that. I would definitely love that for cool. sure. Cool, Well, thanks, you guys. I think we uh, got some more deer to cut. Definitely. Right. we got to finish this we up. We better get back to it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Modern Carnivore Podcast. You can continue the journey by going to modcarn.com. My name is Ronell, and I am a modern carnivore. (laughs) Awesome.